topic to teenage girl. The neighbors called it in. A young guest reported her at about uh, 6.31 p.m. or so. Yikes. I'm glad I wasn't invited. You should be. They're serving some sort of health nut junk. Huh. I bet the guests were more than glad for an excuse to leave. We're suspecting she drowned, but I think there's more to the picture. What do you think? <sighs> I think she had a little too much fun in the sun. <laughs> Hey, Kathy. You know you're not supposed to bring food or drinks onto the crime scene, right? Could possibly contaminate any evidence we find. Hmm. Well, you do know I'm not really on the crime scene yet. Oh. Besides, it's not me you should be worried about. You do remember last year's Christmas party, right? Whoa, whoa. Hold on there. I'm done now. Happy? Tough day with the lady, eh, Mick? Well, I'm gonna go interview the witnesses next door. I hope they aren't as awkward with their words as you two are. So, what do we have here, Danielle? Well, looks like our party girl seems to have drowned in three inches of water. Full rigor, <clears throat> as said in already. And from what I heard, liver temp, it says that she's been dead for about 14 so, hours. So, do we have any identification? Minutes, 27 seconds, uh, 98. Danielle. No need to be pushy. I found this invitation to the dinner party on the Vic. Handwriting's atrocious. I can't make anything out. Um, I think it says Dear Gretchen. No, it doesn't. It clearly says Dear Jane. Oh, so our Jane Doe does have a name. Well, I'll go ahead and document the scene then. See, that's all very well and good. But what did you see last night, Miss? Miss uh, Esmeralda. I'm named after the emerald and my green hair. It's hereditary, you know. It's not contagious, is it? Um, no. Oh, shoot, I'm sorry. It's been a long day. But anyways, what did you see last night? Oh, yes. Um, uh, last night I was looking um, out the window and I saw dead Jane. Alright, alright. Yes. We're here to work, Mick. Not take pictures for your MyFace profile pic. <laughs> what? Oh, nothing. Let's just get to processing the scene. There's a lot of space in my heart. Yeah, I think I found something. Oh, how did we miss that? I don't know. I think it's just my superior intellect. Oh, good. Well, I was afraid I'm not going to be able to find anything to give to Trace. Thank you for your time, miss. You're very welcome. Alright, thank you. Hello, miss. I need to ask you some questions. Okay. Hey then. <sighs> hey Alberta, lovely day, isn't it? Nah, I wouldn't know. We coroners don't get out much. Mm, must be tough. Nah, not really. I have all the company I need here. Ah, uh, good to know that you think so highly of us. So, Alberta, is there anything you need to show us? 
Well, our Vic shows no apparent signs of bruising or scarring on her. Well, but she fell in a pool. There has to be something. Uh, it was made of plastic. I doubt the force would have done anything drastic to her. So, any signs of blood force trauma or broken bones? Nope, our Jane Doe. Well, in this case, it's just Jane, so... Well, that's a first. Well, our Jane seems to have absolutely nothing wrong with her. Send some samples of her blood to Tox and she'll be getting the results back soon. Pity. I was hoping we'd have some sort of lead on this case. Oh no, this wasn't supposed to happen. And now the cops are here. Oh, hi. Good morning. I am at work with a bunch of nerds. Hey there. You too. Excuse me? What would you guys ever do without me? What are you getting at, Hadler? Hmm. If it wasn't for me, your case would have most likely have hit a dead end. That lone hair you collected from the crime scene, it contains DNA that doesn't belong to the victim. Your first lead, thanks to me, is the one Mrs. Poi. Poi? That's an odd name. I've heard weirder. I have a friend in Las Vegas by the name of Hodges. He also works tracing DNA. <laughs> Strange guy. Any other meaningless pieces of information you'd like to share with the class? I wouldn't say meaningless, but I think I know the cause of your fixed death. The toxic part came back positive and she had trace amounts of something something poison in her blood. You're kidding! kidding. Do I ever kid? But how? We were starting to think this was some sort of accident. Or her to have that level of toxicity in her blood, she would have had to have ingested it somehow. The, the dinner, dinner party. party! And I'm pretty sure Poi was the host of that party. And she would have had direct access to all the food. I think we've got our first suspect. I'll call Copper. There's gotta be some sort of motive behind this murder. Um, you're welcome, guys. Dana saves the day. So, you're the person who put on this crazy health food party thing, right? Oh yes, I did. And so you prepared all the food? Uh, um, uh... Would you please explain how poison got into Miss Jane's food? What? No, I didn't! She was poisoned? Surprising, isn't it? Very. So how well did you know the victim? Well, Jane played in the competitive ping pong league with my son. I invited her to this party so the two could share tips and tricks with each other. Oh, so was Jane sitting next to your son? Oh yes, and she was also sitting next to Sarah Tate. Here's the entire seating arrangement. Oh, I do see. Thank you. I'll have to bring them all in for questioning. Hey, this is Copper. So you're the son of Poi, right? Yep. Alright, and let's see, what do we have on you? I hear you play competitive ping pong. I do, and many find it hilarious, but it takes a lot of practice, conditioning, and determination. It is a sport. I bet. So what was your relationship with the victim, Jane? She and I were head to head for the National Ping Pong Champion. I met her at my mother's party. She was... interesting. I see, I see. Now, we found your mother's hair on the victim. Your mother wouldn't have any motive to, I don't know, possibly want to kill your opponent or anything like that, right? No, what? Come on, I was only holding that brush for like less than a second. I'm sure I didn't leave any... Left any? Care to elaborate? Fine, I was jealous of Jane. And I admit, she was a hundred times better than me at the sport. And just seeing her at the party just set me off. I couldn't stand the fact of having to be in the presence of the person who would single-handedly steal my national title and bring humiliation by besting me at what I love. So I killed her. I took some of this poison my mom keeps around the house to kill bugs. And sprinkled it on her food while she was talking to someone else. She didn't even notice. My mom had been brushing her hair before the guests had arrived. She handed me the hairbrush to put it away. I guess some of excess hair must have fallen onto my sleeve. I still find that a stupid, stupid coincidence. So aren't you going to arrest me or something? Gladly. 
Poison, you're under arrest for the poisoning of Jane. Yeah, just Jane. Um, can I ask you a question? Sure, why not? Why was your mother so antsy during our questioning session? Oh boy, my mom's deathly afraid of questioning cops. Don't ask. Alright, yeah, send her in. Looks like I have other fish to fry. See you in court. Oh, you're Miss Sarah? I am. Are you comfortable here? Or? Not very much, no. It's, it's a little dark. Oh yeah, it's one of these dingy rooms. Is this any better? Oh, it's very bright, but it works. So what was your relationship with the victim, Okay, Jane? okay, I admit. I did it. I confess, but... Oh, it was an accident. Wait, what? I killed Jane. But we've already arrested- No, 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 no. Let me tell you what happened. I got invited to this chic dinner party by this woman, Poi, who I had met a few days before at the grocery store. She sat me next to this nice girl named Jane. We talked a bit, until she took a sip of her drink. She said it was bitter, and really needed some sweetener. So, I decided to help her out. She said she had only had a headache and needed to get some fresh air. I didn't think she had been poisoned by me. I tried to stop her, but by the time I got to her, she was already gone. This is all my fault. Well, if you look at it logically, she was poisoned twice. And you only poisoned her once, so it's really just half your fault. Oh my god. Mistake? I'm gonna have to put you under arrest for involuntary manslaughter of Miss Jane. Shoot, why does nobody know her last name? Boy, well, wasn't that a surprise ending. Yeah, I'm sorry that uh, Sarah had to get caught up in all that though. Yeah, but who puts poison and sweetener in their purse and in the same sort of bottle? Mm. Copper told me that Poison's poison was kept in a bottle. So maybe... <gasps> That's it, Mick! I wish I was as smart as you. Ah, shucks, Kath. Thanks. Racy to tell Copper. Hey, whoa, no! Kathy, wait, hey! <laughs> if you don't hurry up, Mick, you might want to kiss that little raise on your paycheck. Goodbye. Oh, I don't think so. Last one to tell Copper, has to buy morning coffee. Let's just hope you don't spill it all over the chief of police like last year's Christmas party. Hey man, not cool. Not cool at all. I remember your face. You were a huge blubbering mess. I'm still winning. No, you're not. Copper, I have something to tell you. Don't listen any to anything Kathy says. She's crazy. Too late, Mick. Kathy's already told me. Sarah's prison time has been cut, and Poi's son's time has been lengthened. Sorry, man. No.